Shannon Russelson, Standing Inquirer. Dee, who has been the most influential person to you in your basketball career, and how has that person helped you? Um, well, I'd say my dad. You know, ever since I was little, you know, he's pushed me to be the best I can be. And he's always told me that success is a journey, so, you know, you got to keep pushing. Do you want to expand on it? Yeah, he makes it to everything he can. Um, he's a busy guy. Um, he was an athletic, athletic guy, you know, growing up. Played uh, pro baseball out of high school. So um, he really pushed me to, you know, experience things that I wanted to experience playing basketball. And he knew that I had to work hard to do that. So, yeah, of course we're close. We'll go right here in the f second row. Matt, Rob Gloucester with Bloomberg News. How tough has it been to coordinate an MBA program with playing hoops? And what specific classes are you missing by being here? Yeah, no, it's definitely a tough balance. I think within any degree or any kind of program to, to balance basketball and go into class. Um, I have two night classes right now. One's a finance and one's an econ. And I'm missing both those are Tuesday and Wednesday night classes. So um, you know, I've missed those for a while. But the teachers are really le uh, not lenient, but good in communicating with us and I see them in their office hours and go in when you know on Mondays and Tuesdays when we're back and stuff like that so but it, I mean it's tough when you miss class anytime what um, the one's finance I think managerial finance and the other one is econ I, I think it's some sort of economics class I don't know the, I don't know the title we're gonna go here in the aisle and then we'll go back to Shannon Zach Brazilla, New York Post. Matt, uh, a lot of people have talked about your, uh, your, I guess, uh, your hobby of driving uh, Uber when you're not playing basketball. Could you tell me a little where that originate, originated? Do people recognize you? Yeah, so I started driving just because uh, I switched my scholarship with my little brother who's a walker on the team. And um, just in order to sort of pay some expenses of, you know, rent, utilities, food, stuff like that, pick that up. Um, I'd say about one out of every two people that I drive recognize me in some way of, hey, you're a basketball player, hey, I know who you are, stuff like that. Has there been any uh, funny interactions or do they wonder why you're driving a, a taxi? Yeah, so sometimes they ask me you know, why I'm doing that and I explain to them the whole scholarship, sh scholarship situation. Um, probably the funniest story was that I had one lady who got in and on the way to getting in, she sort of twisted her ankle and she was on the ground for like five or ten minutes and I had to like coach her up just to like get her in the car and she put her feet up on the dash and was like icing her ankle and then the funny story was I picked her up about two weeks later and I was like oh hey how's your ankle feeling and she's like oh you recognize me sort of embarrassed so yeah other than that no crazy stories. Shannon go ahead. Miles you had a, a tough stretch from three late in the season before doing really well in the last two games. Last year wasn't that same way where you just kind of were on a downward, downward spiral. How were you able to pick yourself out of that and, and find your, your uh, groove again from long range? Um, just confidence. Uh, uh, you're, when, you, when you're a shooter, you know, you're going to keep shooting. I mean, uh, I have great teammates and great coaches that's going to keep telling me to shoot, uh, take good shots. And the good thing about it is, is I can be more diverse and try to create and, and uh, try to make a better shot for me. Uh, you know, it was just it was a learning experience for me last year, and I didn't, especially coming into the tournament, I didn't want to, uh, you know, let my team down and not uh, contribute. But if it means I have to make five threes one game or miss zero threes, I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to win. So that's that. That was a big learning experience for me from last year to this year. Any further questions? Go ahead and follow up. Trayvon, what has it been like, this experience of going um, to your first NCAA tournament and getting here to the Sweet 16? Is it, you know, can you talk about the, the best parts of it so far? Uh, you know, it's been a great experience. Uh, a lot of people didn't really expect us to make it this far, so, you know, it even feels, feels that much better to know that, you know, we were the, you know, odd team out and we're still here. And, uh, you know, to be able to go through um, – you know, Jacksonville, you know, with the police escorts and all that, open practices, you know, it's something I've been dreaming of and, you know, be able to live it, you know, it's, you know, it's just great. Okay, we're going to go back there, then we'll go to the blue shirt and then back to Shannon. Right there, stop. Yep. 
Uh, Matt, sorry to ask you again about what what do you like about uh, driving driving a taxi? Is that where you know what was the, what was it like kind of getting involved in doing that? Um, you know, it's all right. I mean, it's it's relaxing. It sort of gets your mind off basketball because I'd say the majority of the time you're thinking about basketball or school. So. Um, you know, when we have an off day and I get to drive, that's usually the time I drive. And it just sort of relaxes you. You get to talk to people who don't always want to talk basketball all the time. So, I mean, it's, it's a change of pace. We'll go in the striped shirt, please. Yeah, Matt, uh, two questions. It's uh, David Moore with USA Today. First question is about the uh, – it looked like maybe you had a little bit of a lull offensively to, uh, February or toward the end of the year and then rebounded from that. I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about what was going on during that stretch. And uh, I'll follow up. Go ahead. and I, I think maybe I lost a little bit of my confidence. Um, you know, it's tough when, when you have one bad game. Sometimes it, it, it rolls into two and three. And, you know, it's tough where you, you start getting in the gym and shots aren't falling and, you know, stuff like that. And you start – reading what everyone's saying about you on every sort of social media. And that's something that I've, I've sort of blocked out now um, where I don't – I'm not really caring what other people say. So I'm just trying to play hard and, and give it my best. And I'd say probably my lack of confidence was what really got me in that sort of stretch. And I heard this secondhand. Maybe you can clear it up for me. But uh, you were out with uh, maybe a teammate and maybe took a wrong turn and ended up in an undesirable part of L.A. And somebody was joking that maybe you were – better uber driver than you were a pedestrian yeah me and me and my little brother sort of walked around and we found ourselves in skid row and um yeah maybe took a little little left turn that we shouldn't have but we made it back okay so we're good <laughs> all right we're gonna go to the back row and then we'll go to sham just for because we're down to one mic at the moment uh, Trevon, I was wondering your interest level in Arizona. W was that before or after you were involved with UCLA, and what kind of interested you about Arizona at the time? Um, Arizona was before UCLA, um, probably a couple of weeks before. And, you know, when I was narrowing down my list of schools, they kind of came in late. And, uh, you know, I was kind of interested in it, you know, um, just to see what the school had to offer. And so, um, you know, I'd say my interest, you know, was pretty high at the time. <coughs> okay, back to Shannon, please. Remy, Trayvon talked about people maybe underestimating Xavier. How much do you hear that, and, and how does it motivate you or does it motivate you guys as you head into this game? Um, I mean, I don't really hear it a lot. I mean, people, if you watch, you know, like CBS and announcers or commentators say that you're going to lose this game or lose that game. So, I mean – as long as everybody believe in each other, um, I mean, that's the main thing. We got to believe. If you ain't going to believe, then why well, play? So we probably going to be under, underestimated this game. But like I said, we just got to believe. It's only us in the locker room. It's only us out on the court. So We'll go here and then back there. Matt, I'm sorry. This sounds like a question from an HR interviewer. But a year from now, do you see yourself driving a cab, playing hoops, working at a bank, and also 10 years from now? What's your ultimate goal? I think – you know, a year from now, I probably won't be driving a taxi. I'm hoping not. Um, I want to play basketball for as long as I can. I think that's the, the one thing I want to pursue right now is, you know, wherever it's overseas or wherever, um, to try to play basketball. Um, and then I think once my basketball career is done, I'll be, I'll be okay to sit behind a desk for a couple of years and find a job like that. And that's where I can see myself in the banking world. Um, I had an internship at a bank, and I, I really like the corporate finance and all that was involved with that. But, you know, 10 years – I'd really like to open my own restaurant. That's sort of my ultimate goal. I, I enjoy cooking. My you know, parents have always sort of encouraged me to do that. And that's why I kind of got the finance background, because I wanted to be able to you know, handle my own finances for you know, a restaurant. So, All right, Roger, you get the last question. Uh, Matt, it's kind of two questions. The first one is, can you describe the car that you drive when you're what, – what, what is it? What does it look like? It's a 2004 gold Buick Rendezvous. And I describe it as the most typical old person car you could have. It's <laughs> big. It's boxy. It's very bland, tan inside. Um, but it, it fits me in it, and it fits some passengers in it. And it's, it's been kicking for, I think, 190,000 miles now. So it's doing good. And uh, you guys are the last remaining Big East team. What do you think happened to the rest of the teams that you were playing against all season? You know, I think they, they ran some really tough competition. Um, some teams didn't have their, their best nights when they needed to have better nights. 
Um, I think we're doing a good job of sort of representing the Big East, and I think that's something that we're used to as a team, as a program. Um, you know, people always talk about this underestimating us or thinking, you know, we're the little engine that could, but in, by no means are we that. You know, we're once again sort of being the flagship for a conference, and that's nothing new for us, and don't plan on it changing. For Remy D or Miles, are either any of you surprised to be the last team standing from your conference? Um, no. I mean, I knew we can we can do this. I knew we had a good chance. Uh, we have a lot of great teams in our conference, and um, you know, other people didn't believe we can do it, but I, I have so the utmost confidence and faith in in with these guys at this table and the guys in the locker room that. If we, you know, work hard and play hard and stick to the stick to what we need to do, then we can compete with anybody. So, getting here, you know, it's it, it's a great feeling. But you know, I, I I'm not uh, not saying I'm not surprised, but you know, uh, I, I think everybody here would be like we would understand that we could have that we should have done this. Dear Remy, anything? Um, well, I was surprised. Personally, that you know, Villanova didn't make it as far as they did because they're the only team that I never won against. So, personally, I thought they were going to do better, but I mean, that's really the only team I was worried about. Yeah, I knew we could do this too. Um, God is good.